So I will start with a few questions. What comes to mind when you hear the word prison? <laughs> okay. And how would you feel if someone you loved, someone who was close to you, was sent to prison? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my name is Vicky Wambura, and I, I am a change maker. And my mission is to transform prisons um, from places of punitive punishment, from places where we scringe, to places of hope. Places where when the person who we love is sent to prison, we have hope for them, right? Not a place where we feel it's the, the end of the road, it's the end of life, but it's a place of hope, a place where they can find help, place where they can find transformation. Just like when we are sick, we go to hospital, right? We don't, you know, fringe upon it. We go there to find help and we recover. So my mission really is to, is to change prisons from that narrative that is so negative to a place where we look at it and we can feel a bit hopeful. And so my journey began when I was 22 years old. Um, and it was a, from a trigger when I watched a news article about the bad prison conditions. <laughs> the stories we tell. Um, and what came to mind at the time was, you know, who spends time with prisoners? I'd never thought about prison. And so I set out to go to prison and spend a day and just to know who are these individuals who were in prison. Um, but when I, you know, asked around how I could go into prison, I was told I'm young, you're a lady, you know, and unless you just had something, there's no way you can get into prison but it kept burning me and I had to go. So eventually I walk into this male prison and um, a few weeks later I start to volunteer and to teach inmates. For, I found a small group of inmates trying to learn and so I volunteered. And my background is I had just finished my gap year in Europe and I was going back to university. So I was in the, the, the time before I get my visa and all that. So I start to volunteer and three weeks into it, I got like, hey, wait up, I think this is something I want to pursue further. And so I defer my classes to the next term and everyone is like, you must be crazy. There's no way you're giving up your education in Europe to stay here and go to prison. And, <laughs> 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 and so come the next semester, I tell school, I don't think I'm gonna come. And they're like, you know, you, you, cannot, you cannot defer anymore. We have to, you know, refund your fees and everything. I was like, it's okay, I think I found what I want to do. And the only person who kind of believed in me was my mom. She always said, pursue your dreams. Pursue what you see, what you, know, what, what you want in your heart and don't care about anything else, the money and stuff, those things will follow. But everybody else thought I was crazy. My friends, so I lost my friends because I wasn't living the same lifestyle as them. People thought I was crazy. My friends in Europe said, you know, you've lost it and you know, Kenya isn't ready for this. It's not going to happen. The prisons can never change and all these things. And in prison, the prison officers also told me, you're wasting your time. These people will never change. You know, why are you here? You're a young lady. You know, why are you wasting this, you know, formative years of your life? Um, but I kind of chose to just block that out. But it was a very lonely road. Um, and so that year, I gave up myself. I went and I taught and I was preparing the, the, the students to do their class eight exams. And at the end of the year, I see, you know, I was standing there in front of my class, very proud, and asking them, what do you want for your life after this? You know, you're gonna do your exams, and I'm really proud of you, you've come a long way. And one of my best students, his name was Benjamin, he was 23 years old, he was really smart. Um, you know, everybody tells me how, you know, they're gonna make a difference, they're gonna change their lives, and Benjamin looks me dead in the eye, and he says, I'm going to go back and forge checks. And, you know, I, I just stand there and I start to cry. And I'm like, Benjamin, what do you mean? You got three years in prison, you're young, you're smart, you can be anything you want to be. And he looks at me and remorseful and he says, this puts food on my table and a roof over my head. What do you want me to do? And he walks out of class. And I walk out of prison that day devastated. I was crushed, I cried, I asked myself many questions and I wondered, did everything, what everyone told me was true. And my world just came crumbling down and I had just lost a year of my life. 
Um, so I stayed home for two weeks and I was just disillusioned, wondering what to do next. Now, I don't have uni to go to. <laughs> um, and a lot of things had changed even in our family setting. So I began to wonder what if Benjamin was just telling me the truth and I needed to figure out why this was so, why would he go back? And so I go back to prison and I say, I want to meet all the repeat offenders. I want to understand what is their story. Why are they coming back? Because people said, hey, um, they come back to prison because they get a free meal or, um, you know, they're just criminals by nature. They will never change. And so I wanted to hear it from them. And so I asked, I interviewed a few people and, you know, they told me, hey, look, I, I come from the slums. I'm arrested for even three months. I lose my house, the little house I was living in. Um, I have no source of income. I leave prison without a coin. And they go back and they don't even know where to start from. And the majority of people in prison are in the bottom of the pyramid. They have no family to, back, to fall back on. Right? And we keep doing this survey. Um, so I, I kept asking those questions and finding out. And I asked them, what is the solution for you? What do you need so that you can make a difference in your life? And they all gave me the different answers. Some wanted to learn how to read and write. Some had never been to school. So they wanted to get an education. At least maybe somebody would employ them at a low level. Some wanted to start their own businesses. They had no skills to do that. And so I started to just to run multiple classes from teaching people how to read and write to running a business workshop. Um, and so I was about 23 by then, 24. Um, but I knew I couldn't do it alone. I, I was handling a class, five classes at the same time, sitting under trees and all that. Um, and I figured, you know, I needed to have people around me. So I began to call on, you know, um, people in university who could come and do the internship with me. Um, I collaborated with universities. Um, and we were able to set up um, proper programs within the prisons. And so in 2009, Nafisika was born. Um, and you know, we, we, we kept at this and eventually we began to have um, very systematic classes going on. And I remember, and, and you know, so far we've been able to even have um, proper graduations within the prisons where we have the VC of universities coming to officiate graduations, the first ever, and where inmates are able to wear gowns. And <laughs> thank you. And what is more powerful with that is that we get their families to attend these graduations because for the first time in their lives, they achieve something positive. For the first time, their families are able to see them achieve something in their lives other than what, they have been, what has been said about them all along. Um, so we have seen in Afisika the power of collaboration. And so just in this change-making journey, it's important that we are able to collaborate with sectors across the board, um, whether it's on an individual basis, whether it's with corporate, um, and also being in a network like this, because this is a fantastic network where you get to learn from other people, you get to um, get their experiences, and you don't have to go through the same hurdles as them. And so those are the things that we have picked up um, quite a bit in, in Afisika. We've also been able to impact the whole prison system. So we work in partnership and in collaboration with the Kenyan Prison Service. And more than that, you know, I've had to also ask myself, why doesn't the prison system, why isn't it effective as it should be, what it has been set up to be? The prison officers have always just looked at themselves as just keeping inmates in safe custody, but not seeing themselves as um, enablers of change. So how do we get them to see themselves as those who drive change within the prisons? And so we've been bringing capacity development to the prison officers. And also we have, um, we launched the first ever awards program for the Kenyan Prison Service, where we are able to um, identify um, those who are innovative in this space, those who are driving change, um, and the institutions that are doing well, so that it also um, motivates others to do this. Because again, we cannot do it alone. We have to get the whole sector speaking the same language and going the same direction. Um, so we've been able to do that, and um, on every two years we do have the award ceremony. So please watch out for the next one that's coming on the March twenty, March twenty twenty. Um, so if you follow our link, we'll be able to see that. Um, but just to encourage every change maker that's in this room, 
is that we need to collaborate. And I love the fact that Amani has put this together, together with Andy, because we are all in this room and we can all pick out from one another and we can see how we can collaborate. I have seen fantastic people presenting today and it's people we want to see how do we engage in this space because it's important, it's the Kenya that we want to build, as Winnie has said. We've got to see the change that we want. You know, when I was in Europe, I saw ordinary people you know, making an impact in their local communities. And I asked, what am I doing about my local community? And that has been my drive to come back home and to say, I want to be a change in this place. Yeah, so thank you.